like confetti at a wedding And I am celebrating in the downpour Your heart is wild with color Like a never-ending summer You burn away the winter of my cold and weary heart My soul cries out Holy, holy My heart is lost in your beauty All hope is found in your mercy You paid the price Now I am finally free Your grace, oh God's the anchor that's holding me forever. Come trouble or high water, I am steadfast. Yeah, you lift me when I'm sinking, like the swell of mighty oceans. The power of redemption, yeah, it gives me wings to soar. For him, like the rust in leaves of autumn. Now every chain lies broken, and finally we're free.
Good, good morning, everybody. Enjoy the, the song, the joy for us for church today. And thank you for the beautiful warm weather. We've been waiting for that. We, this, we had wet uh, in April. And so my wife, she, she liked to come much warm. Now she's here today. She, she missed a few, two, two, couple weeks, you know. She had a lot of pain. I know we had, we had a little trouble. She's doing pretty good. Like Debbie, she, she prays the Lord. Yeah, she does it. See, a lot of people we have trouble, but but just good things in life. Yes, we just just hang on, because God loves us all. Um, sometimes we need to dig and know that He's there, and so and we Lord, we've seen a lot of trouble in the world. All the tech does it. The kids got killed, Lord. I don't know how the people are ever do that, Lord. It's so sad. Lord, just bless bless the family, Lord. It's so sad, Lord. Lord, there's a lot of good things in the world, Lord, but we just all got to pray together. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the nice warm weather. The people enjoy this holiday weekend, and people are careful and enjoy the, the days and nights, Lord. Thank you for the, the seasons, for the joy of the summer, Lord. So, Lord, help us today. We have this church today and learn to repeat from the Bible, Lord. So the people, and so we need more time and spend time with the Lord every day, Lord. So we thank you this day, Lord. Amen. Amen. Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. Reading aloud and loudly, because I have listened to and obeyed the voice of God, according to his word, which cannot lie, all these blessings will come down on me and spread out beyond me. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. My children are blessed. My labor of my hands is blessed. I am blessed in my business dealings. 
I am blessed in my pantry and my kitchen. I am blessed when I enter my home. I am blessed when I leave my home. The Lord will defeat my enemies. I am blessed in my investments and savings. Everything I attempt to do is blessed. The Lord will make me holy. His name shall be on me. The Lord will give me an abundance of good things. The Lord will open his treasure box and shower me from it. I will lend and not borrow. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. This is true because I have heard and obeyed the voice and commands of God. Why should I fear man? With confidence in God and a clean conscience, I will boldly confess, God has blessed me and I am blessed.
Good morning again. Um, today's devotion is out of Our Daily Bread. It's called, called Pressing Pause to Pray. The fire hydrant gushed into the street, and I saw my opportunity. Several cars had splashed through before me, and I thought, what a great way to get a free wash. My car hadn't been clean for a month, and the dust was thick. So I fired it up and headed into the deluge. Crack. It happened so fast. The sun had already beaten down on my black car that morning, heating its glass and interior. But the water from the hydrant was frigid. As soon as the cold gush hit the hot windshield, a crack struck like lightning from top to bottom. My free wash ended up costing me plenty. If only I had p pressed pause beforehand to think or even to pray. Ever have a moment like that? The people of Israel did under far weighter circumstances. God had promised to help them drive out other nations as they entered the land he had he'd given them, so they wouldn't be tempted by false gods. But one of the nations saw Israel's victories and used stale bread to trick them into believing they lived far away. The Israelites sampled their provisions but did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace unknowingly circumventing God's instructions. When we make prayer a first resort instead of a last, we invite God's direction, wisdom, and blessing. May he help us remember to press pause today.
works of your hand, and we will stop and give you praise, for great is thy faithfulness. Everybody sing it. We will remember. Try to get through this one here. And I still remember the day you saved me, the day I heard you call out my name. You said you loved me and would never leave me. And I never been.
when you climbed up on that hill for you saw me with eternal eyes while I was yet in sin redeemed And every nail drove deep through guiltless hands Said that your love knows no end Redeemer, Savior, friend Redeemer, Redeemer Good morning. Good morning again. Being told by my wife that I yell loud enough up here that people on YouTube can hear me without the microphone anyway. 
I know she sets it about somewhere between zero and four for everyone else. For me and dad preaching, she sets it to negative four so that it you don't top out and blow everyone's eardrums, I guess. Good morning. It's a prayer part of our morning worship service. And let me tell you, if you, I haven't said this before and you haven't heard me say it, prayer is part of worship. The sermon is part of our worship. Prophetic words are an act of worship. We have to trust God in order to even stand up here and give them, let alone receive them. Ah. Ah. Well, my boy is sick at home, and I see we're missing a couple of people, whether they're home from sickness or some other issue that's popped up. I know illness isn't the only thing that keeps us home. Sometimes stuff happens, like a water heater decides to <laughs> pop, and you got water everywhere, and you have to deal with that. You can't just leave that there to go to church, necessarily, not unless you have someone coming over to do it for you. Ah. Well, our country's still a mess. I look at the news, and it's no wonder I have high blood pressure. I look at the bickering between the right and the left, and like you guys know, you're being played by everyone. What we really need to do, what we know we need to do is stop worrying about everything that they're throwing at us in the news and be about our Father's business. Amen. Whether that's our morning prayers or prayer time throughout the day or sharing a kind word with a neighbor. This country isn't going to change for the better. It might become different, but it's not going to change for the better without Christ and without disciples being made. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you. Thank you that you count us worthy to be called by your name. I ask that you would help us and enable us to be bolder, more compassionate, and set ourselves aside for your kingdom, Lord. I ask that you would help us to find new people to tell them about the wondrous things you've done and help them to become disciples of Christ. I ask that you would heal those that need healing today, Lord. My boy Daniel and his sore throat. You would watch over everyone that couldn't be here this morning that normally attend, Lord. And even our visitors that come and go, that you would watch over them, and that you would bless them and be with them. Lord, help us to hear your voice and follow you in our day-by-day -day interactions so that we can be the beacons of hope that you would want us to be. Beacons lifting up your name. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a long road And you don't know how you got to this place You've been carried so far away by your sin The pain in your soul From all the weight of your mistakes Makes you feel you can't begin again he is the God of the second chance, Savior, Redeemer, Forgiver of your past. There is hope for tomorrow, freedom at last. 
of his grace echoes through a life torn apart and makes the broken spirit start to sing it breaks all the chains delivers the captive heart and removes the stains of sin to make you
Well, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> you can open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9 is where we will be this morning. Anybody ready for a quiz? You know, <clears throat> back in when I was teaching, my, my students used to hate an unannounced quiz. Yeah, they always hated that when you had an unannounced quiz, just to see if they had <clears throat> if they had read the material. Well, today we have a quiz. <clears throat> A, a, a quiz on <clears throat> on faith and freedom. So uh, it's not about Memorial Day, but uh, it's a quiz on Galatians chapter three. But don't worry, we provide the answers to this quiz. So Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. So let's start off by reading that. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Everybody got it? All right, here we go. Reading from the New King James Version this morning. Paul writes this, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now, <clears throat> Last week we spoke about what trust looks like. This week we want to look at Paul's quiz to the Galatians on faith and freedom. So look at the questions. First we'll talk about the questions and then we'll we'll look at the at the answers. In verse 1, Paul starts off with the questions. He says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Well, there's the first question. Don't you love the way he starts it off? Starts off, O foolish Galatians. How, how many of you would like to get a letter from somebody where he starts off, hey, you bunch of fools. That's what he's really saying. I mean, yeah, admittedly, he's halfway through his letter to them, and then halfway through the letter he says, hey, you bunch of fools. Isn't that really what he's saying? Yeah. He's saying, hey, you fools. 
Why are you acting like fools? Who, who bewitched you? Who's pulled the wool over your eyes? Who have you let pull the wool over your eyes? Who's bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Who have you let make fools out of you? Huh. Paul is comparing the Judaizers, the people who have come into them, among them, those who, who, who wanted to take them, and they were... They were Jews that came in and wanted to turn these Gentiles and make them follow all the rules of the Jews. They wanted to say, if you're going to be, if you're really going to be Christians, if you're really going to follow Christ, what you have to do is you have to follow all the same rules that the Jews have to follow. You have to be circumcised. You have to follow all the, the Jewish dietary laws. You have, to, you, have to, you have to wash your hands like the Jews wash their hands before they eat. You have to follow all the rules that the Jews follow if you're going to really follow Christ. And he, he's comparing those people to sorcerers that have cast a spell of confusion or delusion on the believers. And he says, he, he, he's, he's comparing them to those kind of people. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, in 1 Samuel, he, he tells him that to follow that, that witchcraft is just, that is, rebellion is just like witchcraft. That rebellion against God is the same as witchcraft. And he said, don't you know any better than that? He says, Jesus Christ doesn't lay anything like that on you. That's not what Christianity is all about. He says, if you want to do all that, he says, you're not being a Christian. Christ doesn't lay any of that on you. Judaism is not Christianity. Circumcision isn't required in Christianity. That's Judaism. He says, Paul says that the Galatians should know better than that because Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed to you as crucified. Look at it. The very first verse. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Christ was crucified for you. The law ended when Christ was crucified. All that died with Christ on the cross. 
And then he gets to another question. He gets to verse 2. And he says, Did you receive this spirit by the works of the law? Which is what the Judaizers were pushing. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by hearing of faith? The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith? Well, yeah. In another place, when Paul's writing in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it, Paul makes it clear to the writing of the, to the Ephesians that salvation is by grace through what? By grace through faith. It's not of works. It's not of works lest any man should what? Should boast. He says, it's not of works. It's not that you can work your way to, through to, to salvation. There's nothing that we can that we can do to earn salvation, which is exactly what these Judaizers were trying to get them to do was to work your way to salvation. And listen, there are a lot of churches today that are trying to teach the same thing. It's not just, just that you get salvation as a gift of God. You've got to do this and this and this. That it's that you well, yes, it's a gift of God, but then you but but in addition to that, you have to do this. You have to 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 go to catechism and you have to be you have to be um, um, oh, I can't think of the word. You have to be confirmed, and you have to take all these classes, and then you have to be baptized, and then you have. To, uh, I don't. I don't recall any of that being in scripture. I don't read anywhere in scripture that tells me I have to be confirmed. I don't read anywhere in scripture that tells me that I that I have to be that I have to be baptized. I mean. What, what happened to the man on the cross? The thief on the cross. Did Jesus tell him, well, <clears throat> uh, make sure that you get baptized. When the thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me. When you were, Did Jesus say, well, you get baptized and then I'll see you in my kingdom? No. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, what? This day I say to you. Yeah. The thief on the cross didn't have any chance to be baptized. And yet Jesus said, this day I'll see you in my kingdom. This day. It's all so much for requiring baptism to be saved. Huh. It's clear. Salvation is by grace through faith, not of works. There are no works that you can do that will save you. It's simply by grace through faith. And look, look at verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, that you are now being made perfect by the flesh? That'd be kind of hard. Since Romans chapter 7, verse 18 and following makes it clear that Paul says, in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. And he goes on to write about the struggle between his flesh and the spirit of God who dwells in him. In me, he says, in me, in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. I've had people say to me in, on rare occasions, you're a good man. And my response to that is, no. Anything good in me is Jesus. 
You see anything good in me? It's Jesus. It's not me. There's nothing good about me. The only thing good about me is Jesus. I know me. I know what a rotten scoundrel I was when it was just me. And you ask anybody that knew me before I knew Christ and they can tell you what a rotten scoundrel I was. There's nothing good about me. And, and, and Paul said, is, is basically saying the same thing. He says, in me, that is, in my flesh, dwells no good thing. The only good thing about Paul before he came to the Lord just wasn't there. Now, we move on to verse 4. He says, Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Let's go to Acts. Let's turn, let's turn back to Acts. 14. Acts chapter 14. And let's read verses 21 and 22. Acts 14, 21 and 22. Now, <laughs> he had just, Paul had just been stoned. He had been in Lystra. He had just been stoned, left for dead. <clears throat> and it says, and, and, and so, <clears throat> they'd left, uh, they'd, in, in verses 19 and 20, they'd stoned Paul. They dragged him out of the city. <clears throat> and he'd left, he'd left that town. In verse 21, they'd gone to Derby. And it says, and when they, verse 21, and when they had preached the gospel to that city, in, in Derby, where he'd, he'd, he'd moved on to. When they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples. This is just after he had been stoned. They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, comfort, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying, We must, through many tribulations, Enter the kingdom of God. Can you imagine? And now, <clears throat> here he, he's writing to the Galatians and he says, Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. And here he says in Acts 14, 21, 22, it re records Paul's encouragement to the churches in Galatia at the end of his first missionary journey. I mean, and he's asking people, have you suffered so much in vain? He's asking them if they've suffered much in vain. Look, listen to what he, look what he just suffered. And he's asking if they've suffered in vain. He'd been, He'd been, he'd been stoned. He'd been whipped. He'd been. At this point in his in his life, he'd suffered more than probably any of us have ever, ever suffered. And here he is encouraging the churches, saying, "What have you, what have, what have you suffered in vain? If indeed." He said, if it was really in vain, and he's encouraging them, and he says, listen, was it really in vain? 
And then he goes on into verse 5, and he says, even if it was in vain, which it wasn't, look at verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He says, is it through the law that he does these things? Or does he do it by faith? I've never heard of the, heard of the, of the law accomplishing any of these things. I've never heard of the law of a, accomplishing anything. It's the Spirit of God. It's God's Spirit at work in the church that accomplishes anything. Have you ever heard of the law doing anything? If you if you look at the look at the churches that live by the law, do you see miracles in those churches? No. It's it's where you see God's spirit at work. So answer this question in verse 5. Does the God who lavishly... This is the, this is the, the message translation. I, I usually don't use that translation. It's not really a translation. It's a, a paraphrase. But listen to the way the message Bible reads. Does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your lives you could never do for yourselves. Does he do these things because of the strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? Hmm. That's one of the few places where I like the Message Bible. Does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your lives you could never do for yourselves, does he do these things because of your, your strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? Yeah. So those are the questions that Paul asks. Now let's look at the answers. Verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It works the same for the Galatians and for us. It's, it's not about how much good we do or how closely we follow the rules because if it was, we'd all be bound for hell. It, it, it's not about us. It's not about our good works. Because to be honest, we don't do that many good works. And even if we did a lot of good works, it wouldn't get us anywhere. Our good works just don't work that well. Our good works are too bound up in us. They don't have enough of God in them. They're still our good works. And because we're involved in them. They're flawed. 
How many of you could ever say you, you started off to do something good and it just didn't turn out good? Anybody ever have that happen to them? Yeah, my good works have gone wrong too many times. So let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, Only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Now that sounds pretty exclusive. Only those who are sons of faith are sons of Abraham. But it's true. We must be spirit born. We must be spirit led. We must be spirit sustained. If we're ever to succeed as believers in Christ. Not just spirit born, we've also got to be spirit led. And we have to be spirit sustained. Got to be all three. We can be born of the spirit, but if we refuse to be led by the spirit on a daily basis, and if we aren't if we, if we, if we aren't spirit led, we're going to be go wandering off on our own, and that didn't work out very well. And if we're not spirit sustained, if we don't have the spirit of God empowering us on a daily basis, we're going to run out of steam. And we'll never accomplish what we need to. We've got to be spirit born, spirit led, and spirit sustained if we're ever going to succeed as believers in Christ. And then look at verses 8 and 9. It says, As the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, that's Galatians, the Galatian people were Gentiles, and us were Gentiles. So as the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That comes right out of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. You remember that. Let's look back at it. Genesis chapter 12. Oops, went too far. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Listen to it. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Somewhere down the line, we'll deal more in depth with the blessing of Abraham. But for now, notice the distinction that Paul makes between those who are trusting in their own works and those who are trusting in the saving work of Christ on the cross. Note, look at the distinction between them. In you, all the nations shall be blessed. So those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. And this morning, and frequently, we sing about freedom and being free around here. And the only thing that makes us really free is the saving work of Jesus Christ. John chapter 8, verse 36, says it so succinctly. It says, If the Son shall make you free, 
you shall be free indeed. No, 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 no other, no other person, no other force on this earth can set you free like the Son of God, like Jesus Christ can set you free. But when Jesus sets you free, that's when you're really free. And he can set you free like no one else. If you need to be free today, Jesus can set you free. And if you're watching this today on, on YouTube and you need to be set free, all you have to do is come to him and tell him, I need to be set free. Doesn't matter what you need to be set free from. He can set you free from addiction. He can set you free from PTSD. He can set you free from anything that has you bound. And he'll do it today. You just need to ask him. Jesus, I need to be set free. Give him your life. Give him an opportunity. He will set you free. And he'll do it. He'll give you a new life that you never imagined you could have. He loves you that much. He loved you so much that he died for you on a cross, on a hill called Golgotha 2,000 years ago today. And he rose three days later and he's still alive today, still setting people free. And he'll still do it for you if you just give him a chance. Pray with me right now. Jesus, I come to you right now. I give you my life. I need you to set me free. Tell him what you need to be set free from. I ask you to set me free. I'll live for you every day. I thank you for setting me free, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, I believe Jesus saved you and set you free. Send me an email at Song of Joy Church at gmail.com. I'll get in touch with you. We'll send you a Bible if you need one. We'll help you find a good church if you need to. And we'll stay in contact. God bless you. Stay tuned for the blessing.
Hi, Pastor Bundy here. I trust that today's service touched a point of need in your life somehow today. If you happen to have questions, comments, prayer requests, or even a praise report, we'd be thrilled if you would send it to, to us so that we could uh, share in, in, in it with you. Uh, send them to songofjoychurch at gmail.com. Um, and if you don't have a local church that you support with your tithes and offerings, we'd be glad to receive them at uh, Song of Joy Foursquare Church. You send those to uh, Song of Joy Church at uh, 5117 U.S. Highway 51 South, Janesville, Wisconsin, 53546. Remember always that you are richly blessed, that you are abundantly loved, and that you are genuinely cared for. God bless you. Have a great week.